Okay, so somehow, Mark, you're walking forward, right? And this is the double fall back, and... This is about a work of art in the making. Uh, staying back, Liz. Go ahead, John. In a studio in Soho, Susan Marshall choreographs the steps to the sleepwalking scene of the dance opera Les Enfants Terribles. That was, that was really good up to, uh, I think, the, let's try what we just did. Next door is Philip Glass, the composer, sitting in on a music rehearsal. That, that 16th, those 16th notes are kind of awkward, aren't they? Uh -huh. He's here to make any necessary corrections to his score for the opera, based on the movie Les Enfants Terribles by French avant-garde artist Jean Cocteau. Yeah. It'll be better, huh? yeah. We're now in the point which I call where we're realizing the work. The piece is actually uh, being conceived in terms of an idea. But now what has to happen is that all those things which in a way are reading on the drawing board come to life. So now I have real singers instead of imaginary singers and to feel how the voice is really going to sound, it's kind of like fitting a costume. It has to be adjusted. This is only the second week of rehearsals, and the collaboration between Philip Glass and Susan Marshall is still in its developmental phase. But the world premiere in Switzerland is a little over a month away, and so the pressure's on. Okay, are you ready? How much have you choreographed already? Up until now, there's maybe two or three scenes that I haven't touched at all, but by and large, they've all been sketched. But in terms of sections that I could actually call choreographed, you know, count them on one hand at this point. Oh, shoot! Okay. Oh. Les Enfants Terribles begins with snow falling on the city of Paris. Some schoolboys enter and start a snowball fight. Paul, sung by Philip Cutlip behind me, gets injured by a snowball that might have a rock in it. And so the scene is set with a seemingly innocuous event, and yet the mood is somehow dark and brooding. The underpinning of the whole opera is this sort of pulse of, of slow and fast energy. It's that sort of underwash of of unexpected harmonies that make you sort of feel unsettled and, and when you think you've got it under control, it changes and does something you're not expecting again. Les Enfants Terribles, known in English as Children of the Game, is a surreal, slightly menacing story of a group of teenagers who play tricks on each other. <laughs> The main characters are Paul and Liz, a brother and sister who live in a dream world of their own making. Careful! It's up to Susan Marshall to develop a vocabulary of movements that will help bring this world right. to life. She's going to go... Wait. What I'm trying to do in the approach is not to act out what the singers are singing, because I feel that if we get to that place, uh, well, we're going to belittle the dance. The dance just becomes a translation of what the people are singing. Um, and it seems far more interesting if we can do something other that uh, where, where the dance and the words meet, what they add up to will be more than the sum of their parts. As the day comes to a close, the dancers find a moment to relax. Should we just do a little thinking about tomorrow? Krista and Kristen, you need to be available at 2 for Kasha. Three weeks pass, and it's now May 1st. We're getting close. The piece is starting to come together. 
Today, all three keyboardists are gathered together for a rehearsal with the conductor and three of the four singers. By now, most of them are comfortable with the score. We're hearing the real lyricism of the music coming out now, which it took a while. We're starting to hear how the, the voice parts really go together, the, the kind of dialogue. I mean, these are people that are talking to each other. I can hear that the singers are listening, they're responding, and the pieces are therefore becoming dramatically more potent, more rich, and I think uh, overall more lyrical. Les Enfants Terribles is the third part of a trilogy by Philip Glass, based on the films of Jean Cocteau. Like the first two operas, Orpheus and Beauty and the Beast, Les Enfants tells the story of the transformative power of the imagination. It's about a transformation that, that kind of goes very bad in a way, that turns into something very dark and, becomes, and turns finally into, into death. Les Enfants centers around Paul and Liz, who have a twisted, almost incestuous relationship. I think what uh, I resonate most to in this work is the sense that um, Paul and Liz uh, have a tragic flaw. When Paul falls in love with Agathe, Liz hatches a plot that leads Paul to commit suicide. Obviously, Liz loves Paul in a way that she can't allow him to uh, leave her or love anyone else more than he loves her. With one week to go before the final dress rehearsal, Susan Marshall is still trying out steps with her dancers. Under pressure, she comes up with new ideas, quickly and carefully. She knows that later this afternoon will be only the second full rehearsal with singers and dancers combined. The results are expected to be interesting. I'm still in the nuts and bolts phase, and all my thoughts about the characters that I had from the beginning, I'm just hoping are, are going to, are coming through. And I won't really know that until we get it more together. The question of bringing the two companies together, the, the vocal company and the dance company, into one company, that in fact, I think was a major challenge and, and the thing that needed to be accomplished to make the piece succeed. This run through only made it to scene 14 out of a possible 20, but even so, it provides an overall sense of the shape and rhythm of the artwork. While it's all still soft, while the work hasn't defined itself, the possibility of what that work can become is, all, is still very enticing for me. So, I, you know, I, I love the process. I love the process. All of it. And that's as far as we know. Okay, to be continued. <laughs> all right. Okay. Good work, everybody. <laughs> I'll see you later, alligator. Okay. See you tomorrow. All right. Chairs, because the chairs are really sharp. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, it is one o'clock, and I'd like all dancers and singers on stage, please. It's now one week later, and the company has relocated to a larger rehearsal space on the campus of SUNY Purchase, just north of New York City. Susan, just be careful not to stand in a dead spot. There's a bit of a dead spot between here and here. Susan Marshall, who's in charge of the overall direction of the opera, conducts a last-minute technical rehearsal. All right, company, move to the same place, and we'll take it from the same place and be prepared to go on.
Philip Glass is stimulated by the collaborative process. In it, he says he finds room for growth and always something new. He asked Susan Marshall to work with him because he says he's inspired by her choreography. Ready, guys, and here we go. There are artistic visions uh, that are not, that hopefully are not competitive, but are hopefully complementary, and, and they're, they're, they should fit together. Uh, but there's also a lot of tugging and pulling going on. Uh, this is the process. And you have to stop, Eileen and Hans. Right. Okay, good. Okay. Well, the moment has finally arrived. All the props, lights, stage sets, costumes, singers, dancers, and musicians are on stage together for their final dress rehearsal. From here, the troupe goes to Switzerland for the world premiere of Les Enfants Terribles. Now is the time to find out if this dance opera can transform itself into a true work of art. looking at an opera that, uh, that stage in a way you've never seen an opera stage before. It's simply never done this way. Uh, uh, the fluidity of, uh, of the elements, the way they flow together, uh, from dance to music and from dance to singing, singing to dance, and how they coexist, that's something really quite uh, new. By involving the singers in the dancing, Les Enfants brings together both the music and the movement and incorporates them into the texture of the opera. Dancer Krista Langberg says working with the singers is a challenge. It slows up our process in a way, but it adds to it at the same time. I mean, they're pretty amazing. They, they pretty much, for, for opera singers and not being dancers, they move really well. Paul is sick at heart. He loves Agat, but his sister Liz misleads him into thinking that Agat does not return his love. Desperate, Paul takes some poison. I think the ending is going to be fine. You, it's very dramatic, the music's very dramatic, you know she's going to kill herself, you know what's happened, it, it's working. After Paul dies, Liz decides she cannot live without him. The ending I feel very confident about. Um, I got a charge from it. Singers, tomorrow is 10 to 12. Dancers, 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock. 1 to 2 is warm-up time. I'll come down and tell you all about the where. It's, it's happening. It's happening. Yes, please. Yeah, good. we got another. We have time, and it's catching, trying to catch fire now. Thanks. Thank you. Les Enfants Terribles is currently on tour throughout Europe. I'll see you Tuesday. Have a good trip over. Yeah, Take care of my little friend. It arrives in New York at the Brooklyn Academy of Music on November 20th. This is Jenny Atia in New York.